I'm Owen Palmer, welcome back to my studio. This time we're going to be looking at doing some authentic 90s style underground dance music production inside of Cubase 10. Okay, so this project is a Vibes and Hattricks project. It's called It's About Time and it features the vocals of Sophie Faith. We did this for an exclusive album project for a small number of people, so you won't, probably won't have heard this anywhere before. And one of the interesting things about this project is we wanted the sound of an old school breakbeat, happy hardcore vocal, you know, the sort of chipmunky vocal. And so what we did is we had Sophie sing over some electric pianos that we laid down. We, we did them at 160 and then we pitched them down. I can't remember how many semitones would be four, four or five. And then she sang at that tempo, which I think was like 130 something. And then we pitched it back up. So I actually have the full vocal recording session now at 160 in a chipmunk fashion. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight into what that sounds like once it's at 160 again. <laughs> right now, right here. <laughs> oh, right now, right here Tell me, cause tonight is the night Today is the day Don't worry, it's okay This is our chance, this is the moment mm. Whoa. You'll notice as well that she's not singing something that's solid and continuous. Actually, what we were doing was just riffing and kind of bouncing ideas uh, between us. So I would say, sing this phrase, and then she would sing it back. And I'd say, well, try this melody with that phrase. And then we'd sort of add words and move things around. And what we ended up with was a huge recording of lots of different phrases um, that don't necessarily go together. And then we spent some time chopping up our favourite phrases from that recording, which was a long recording, I think it was about an hour. And then we patched those together into a melody, into lyrics for It's About Time, which is the track. It's the title track from the album, It's About Time. Um, and it's in a 93, 93, 94-ish sort of breakbeat, happy hardcore style. So the project starts with the classic Amen breakbeat, which I processed using a load of outboard gear and then chucked into Hallion as slices but they're not slices like individual slices I've got basically start points and some of these are processed to do more fancy things like the deck stops um, and that just makes it much easier to do patterns um, here's the pattern that we did in MIDI That's just fodder for the intro, really. That's nice for a DJ to mix with vibes. He always likes to do that kind of thing, or he did back in 93. And that's the style that we've gone for. There's a few effects on there. The main thing that you probably can hear is this comb filter from Melda Production, which is free. It's called M-Comb. And you'll see that the dry wet and the filter frequency are automated. So here's what that's like with the automation. The next interesting thing on this particular track is um, this breakbeat that comes in as well. This is a breakbeat that we designed specifically for this. So what we actually did, we took drum hits from other breakbeats and we fused them together using vocoders and morph plugins and that kind of thing. And we pieced together this breakbeat to sound authentic, but not too worn out, like if we'd just picked one of the stock breakbeats. I mean, we already had the Amen breakbeat in there, so we thought we'd give it some contrast and give it some other flavors so it doesn't just sound like any old Amen track, which hopefully it doesn't when it gets further into the track.
by the way, if you're interested in using vocoders in that kind of way and using morph plugins in that kind of way, the thing to do is to find a sound that you like, say a snare sound, and then find another one that's perhaps contrasting from that one, but you also like it, or maybe it's similar, and then finding the and then finding the blend between those two with either a vocoder that can take two audio inputs or with a morph plugin, there's M Morph by Melda Production. And there's Zynaptic Audio's Morph 2, which I also use quite a lot. Um, and they're, they're, they're similar, but give slightly different results. Actually, there's another break beat that's further on in the project that we also made, that's this one. Done in the same sort of way. But for this one, what we did, we also created a stereo version. So this break beat is mono. And then we have a slightly different version that is um, pure stereo, so it doesn't have any mono content whatsoever. It's basically just side, side information. Sounds quite weird on its own, but when you put it back with the dry version, I really feel that opens up the mix and helps it sit on top of the Amen breakbeat rather than just getting buried inside there, which breakbeats often do because the Amen's quite, quite full. Finally, for the drums, there was this other break beat that we tried, but it didn't really work to fit it in. But I just chucked a load of plugins on it and made it sound like this echoey effect. And we just kind of used that as a decoration to kind of liven up the beats when it just gets to the point where it's just mainly beats and bass. So the next interesting thing I think in this project is this sound effect here, which I don't remember specifically all of the steps involved, but I've got a, a handful of analog synths like this one. And I think I did like a, a filter sweep and then edited that inside the computer. And this is the, the effect. Um, I, I really can't remember the specific details about what I did to that, but I remember I added a thunder sound effect off a sample CD. Um, so that sounds like this. And there's, I think there's probably some comb filter on that thunder actually. And then... And then this is another sound effect off the same sample CD, I believe. That effect really just helps to punctuate the different sections. So as we come out of the intro beats, that helps us transition into the breakdown. And of course, we have our vocal. Let me chuck that back on. Giving you everything, giving you all my love. It's about time, it's about time. Oh, tonight is the night. So one of the things that we did to differentiate this from an actual 1993 track was to make the bass just that little bit louder, just that little bit more powerful. And for this particular bass line, we've got a C0. Now, if you've watched a lot of tutorial videos and masterclass videos, you'll hear a lot of people talking about the F note and how that's like the strongest note that you can get to work in a club. I definitely subscribe to that. I definitely find that around sort of F, G, you get a nice resonance, a nice strong deep resonance in a club. But for this, we thought, forget all that, let's go even deeper. And this note isn't essential to the bass line. Like it, the bass line works without that note. So we thought, why not have a super, super deep note? So I wonder, maybe you can hear this, maybe you can feel this, I don't know, but I really like this note. Oh. 
by the way, I found that that works really nice in headphones. It works really nice with a sub pack that I'm using now. And it works really nice in a car system if you've got a nice big sub. So yeah, why not basically? And then we transition into a nice 93, 94 style Amen 808 bass drop. And all of those little bits of piano and everything that go on top, that's like vibes all over. If, if he was here, he'd tell you himself, he can't go sort of eight, 16 bars without having some sprinkles and stuff. And I, I really appreciate that influence because I also like more minimalistic music, like even some of the old, like the really old dubstep and drum and bass and that kind of thing, where you don't necessarily have to have chords and melody always on, but it's really nice when you have a drop that could possibly stand up by itself. I mean, we could have had like some dark sound effects and things like that, which there's a few bits like that in there, but it's nice to then bring it to a more melodic, happy place and sort of mix and fuse the two sort of worlds together. And I find actually that's the key to this kind of music for me. The key to this kind of music is that you want it to be happy, but you also want it to have a bit of a hard, rough edge. And I would even say that that hard, rough edge leaks into the sort of painful realm. You want some pain in there. So I, I would say, you know, there's happy hardcore music out there that is just happy, 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 happy and nothing else. And yeah, I can appreciate that sometimes maybe. But really for me, um, probably the pinnacle of that music was the time when the darkness from 92 was moving into the happy hardcore of say 93, 94. And there was that kind of crossover point just before the split. If you know your history anyway, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that's the kind of up down mix, mixed up vibe that we've tried to put into this music. And once we got that basic idea down, we then created a pad sound to go with it. Now hopefully the nice thing is how the track moves in and out of these sections. So I'll just go to the point where that breaks down and you'll hear how it rolls back into the dark bass and amen. we'd take a quick look at the pad design which simply is one of my pad shop pre-prepared samples with effectively unison on it it's eight voices and this lovely chord and you know probably worked a little bit with the the filter amount and that kind of thing but once that was sampled then Sounds much more authentic old school, I hope. Okay, so in a way, this track has more than one ending. And what I mean by that is there's sort of the point where the music ends and then it moves to a sort of DJ extended ending where you can mix where it's just beats. And then there's another ending after that, which is an interlude that we put on the album because the album has interlude tracks between all of the main tracks. Um, and that in itself is a sort of down tempo sketch. But have a listen to the first ending, which is where the music ends and we transition into the DJ outro. <laughs> So this section represents an area that the DJ can use to mix. Obviously that's something that's a staple in pretty much every dance genre. There's a few little playful bits in there that we left in for doing cuts on the mix and that kind of thing. Um, but really the real outro 
is after this section when, as I say, we take the tempo right down, well, it's a half speed section effectively. Um, here comes that now. point of contention on this particular section was that fast piano which I really liked. Uh, Vibes E Shane, he wasn't 100% sold on it, at least at first. Um, but there's, there's a few interesting things about the production on this. So the original piano sound is just off the regular Korg M1 plug-in and what I did is when I recorded it, I recorded it again through some hardware stuff just to brighten it up and um, well I say brighten it up but it also makes it a bit grittier saturates it a little bit makes it sound more old school probably makes it sound more like the hardware although I wasn't too bothered about that specifically so the first thing on there is multiply which is a chorus plugin that's very subtle it just gives it a little bit of width the next thing is the MPX native reverb from lexicon which is a very nasty cheap sounding horrible old style reverb which is perfect for this kind of music in fact i would go so far as to say that's perfect for all dance music i know that's a big claim but um, maybe you should give it a go again it's pretty subtle next on my list is m transformer now this is a bit of a naughty one m transformer seems to have the effect of well the way i've used it it seems to soften the sound. So I wouldn't say that it makes it more like analog because this is a totally digital effect. It's a spectral based plugin. But what I will say is that it, it gives a vibe similar to maybe an old cassette tape or something like that, even though it does it in a very, very different way. So here's the piano with M Transformer on there. notice just that the piano is much softer, much smoother, the transients are tucked in, shall we say. Bypass that. You hear it's a lot more hard and metallic and, well, sounds like the M1 piano. Um, okay, those, those are the main effects and then it's just got a bit of EQ and a delay. Um, and by the way, I used that M transformer effect on quite a few of the sounds in this mix. Um, in fact, probably throughout the track, but especially on this section to give it a, a slightly soft, smooth sound that is not too much like the sharp, cold digital sound, even though it's a very digital effect. I must stress that it's not supposed to emulate analog kit. It doesn't particularly sound analog. It just has some, some qualities in common with analog tape. And 
the final melody on the end is another pad shop sound. As you can probably tell, I use pad shop quite a lot. Um, this melody was, uh, it was written with me and Shane vibes together. Um, basically how that happened was that I would play a little bit of something and then he would sing a little bit of something and well I was trying to write a melody and he was just singing over the top and <laughs> that works you know we, we we bounce off each other and the more ideas I have the more ideas he gives me back and then when he hears how I interpret those ideas he has more ideas and so this melody um, I actually find it really tricky to pinpoint which parts were done by who because um, it sounds like both of us but I think the, some of the parts that sound like him were done by me and some of the parts that sound like me were done by him um, but I was really happy with how this came out <laughs> sound by the way is in two layers so the first layer is actually a piano sample that's it's just a one sample so it's not a multi sample and that means when you play low notes it sounds really lo-fi and only when you play the higher notes does it start to sound more like the original sample that it was because it was sampled at a high pitch and that's got and that's obviously got tons and tons of reverb and whatnot on it The other layer is an electric piano layer and that's also coming out of pad shop and it just gives it that sharpness. And of course when you put put them together Right, we're out of time again. I want to say a massive thank you to Steinberg and of course Future Music. Remember, you can check out my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Owen the Geek.